This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls. Welcome back to our Euler series. Today we are taking a look at solving Euler problem 14 using Python. As you can see on the screen I have already copied in the uh, template that I usually use for these problems with at the top row of the doc string the title and then a default parameter indicating what we're going to use in this um, problem a tagline which we are not currently using in the main program maybe that will come at some time in the future um, and then the description of the problem and this description is a fun one the following iterative sequence is defined for the set of positive integers uh, where we take a look at n and if n is even we divide it by 2 and if n is odd we multiply n by 3 and add 1 and then repeat the process um, with these two rules until we reach the 1. Uh, using the rule above and starting with 13 we generate the following sequence we get 13 uh, which is odd so we multiply by 3 and add 1 we get a 40 which is even we divide by 2 get 20 still even divide by 2 again get 10 divide then we get a 5, etc, etc, until we finally reach 1. This sequence contains 10 terms, um, and although it hasn't been proven yet, um, I'm going to throw in some enters, uh, the conjecture, the uh, Collette's conjecture that we are looking at is that every starting number will reach 1 eventually. Uh, if we take a look at all the numbers below 1 million, what number has the longest chain in the series? And then a special note, note that once the chain starts, the terms are allowed to go above 1 million. As you can see with 13, um, it can generate terms higher than itself, so the, the sequence goes up and goes down. By the way, um, one of the many names this problem has, it's called the Collett's Conjecture, but it's also, um, a Collett's made this uh, stated this problem in uh, the formal mathematical language in 1937-ish um, but the problem itself was known for a very long time so there's an English lord from the 1700s that has his name attached to this uh, there's a um, uh, Chinese name for it or Japanese I believe there's a, um, uh, it, some uh, mathematicians from India looked at it and, and I believe there's even an old Greek name for it so it the problem has quite the history. Um, today it's best known as the Collett's Conjecture and the numbers that it generates for any starting number are known as the hailstone sequence um, because hailstones in, uh, in a cloud go up and go down as well eventually reaching the ground and here we see numbers going up and go down until we finally reach one. As stated it is believed that every number will eventually land at one. So let's get cracking. Um, I have uh, some boilerplate code here. Um, if we run this file on its own, it will uh, call out main. If we run this through our um, um, main module, then that will also call this run function. And uh, the run function all that does is start up attempt number one. So here we go. Um, let's see. Now we um, we need to keep track of the longest path. Um, which is currently zero, and we need to keep track of the uh, number responsible for that, which is also zero, number four, longest path, I'm shorting it down a little here. We want to eventually return this number. Which starting number under one million produces the longest chain is the, uh, the actual question stated in this Euler problem. So this is the one we're interested in returning eventually, uh, though we need to add a little bit of code before that happens. Um, uh, we want to start at um, 2, I guess, 1, 1, why not, uh, and we'll run all the way up to, but not including n, below 1 million. Uh, let's see, now here we need to... Um, Uh, here we need to do the actual calculation. So 
Um, while I is greater than one, if I modulo two is zero, if we are dealing with an even number, then we want to divide i by two. Uh, and at any iteration, we want to increase the steps taken here, of course. There we are. Uh, we want to divide, else we want to increase. I buy this factor. Um, uh, that looks about right. Uh, and then, if if we eventually land at one, if steps is greater than uh, whatever the longest currently had, then longest is set to steps, and uh, the number responsible for the longest path is set to. I, we have modified I along the way, this is not going to go well, so we need a variable here that we work on, and we need to store I or keep I unchanged to, to use it here, alright. So that should do it. I'm gonna see if this works for. Uh, wait, this is not right. This should be 1 million. And I'm gonna use 1000 instead just to see if the, the problem runs. It might. I should have added a little bit more feedback on the running. I'm going to stop this for a second, then um, show the number we are currently running. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a, an error in my ways, in my code. Uh, let's see. Uh, one, of course, starts out as... Right, doesn't really matter. Uh, do need to assign this though. Um, sorry, my bad. That runs pretty smoothly, and the number with the largest chain appears to be 871. Right, that could be. I am unsure for a thousand. Skip that and have it run up to 1 million as asked. In fact, we're going to run it through um, our main pi. So here is our main pi. We're going to run this. I'm going to request program 14 with the default parameter for 1 million. And there we have our answer. So it took us well over uh, nearly half a minute to get it. Um, and it's correct. I can spoil that much for you. If you want this number over at Project Euler, you will get the green check. And though we can speed this up significantly. And to see what uh, strategy we're going to use there, it's best if uh, you, the viewer, actually try to figure this one out by yourself. Um, so just see what happens when you make a collet tree, as we call them. Um, so you. Um, you do this uh, on your own, on a piece of paper. You just take one and write down the chain for one, which is virtually non-existent. Then you see that two adds to this, and then you're interested in three. Well, and two just immediately drops back to one, right? So three, we need to multiply that, and then add one, so that gives us ten, which gives us five, which gives us 16, which gives us 8, which gives us 4, a 2, and a 1. 
right? Because anytime you hit a power of two, you can simply divide by two until you reach one. Um, so that's quite a chain already. Now, if you take a look at four, we already know what's going to happen with four. Because we've encountered it previously when cracking three. Same goes for five and six. Uh, six can be divided by two, giving us three, etc. In fact, if we take a look at the example given here, we also know what 26 is going to do, right? Now, how can we use that knowledge? How can we, um, if we, um, if we know how a chain is going to develop once we hit a point that we've seen previously, how can we keep track of uh, what we've seen before? And we're gonna take this one out. We're gonna create a new um, function here, which we are going to call how original attempt number two, and we're gonna. This, why not? So, what data structure would be um, would allow us to visualize what's going on here? Uh, would allow us to store what's going on. So, basically, we want the length of a given number and that number itself. We are not interested in the numbers themselves um, because once we get a 16 or excuse me a 10 uh, we know that the chain from here on out is one two three four five six seven pieces long so if we know that then we know sufficient to solve this problem So let's let's have a look then. Um, we need um, we need something of a data store, and I'm gonna propose a dictionary here. In uh, dictionaries, you can store a key value, or you can store a key with a value. So if we store uh, the ten as mentioned before in here, and then the um, path length. Now we're going to hit uh, 10 because we got uh, 20 somewhere. So now we know that uh, 20 will become uh, whatever is it, 10 plus 1, which will turn out to be 8. Right? So dictionary has the, the key component that we need to look up uh, if we've already hit a certain number and the value part to check what the path length was for that particular number. In fact, I'm gonna uh, create a dictionary by uh, hang on, wrong button, right? By initializing it for storing something for for one, and then we're gonna say. Uh, for i in range this bit again all the way up to n uh, we're gonna do the this thing again and then if our if j is in our store Is this correct? No, it isn't. Uh, in fact, we're going to do this a little bit differently. Yes, we're going to need this to be a module variable. With a second function
this is going to calculate just one particular path. Uh, and this will call This will call that function with the current number we're checking and storing that as uh, as length. So this is going to give us back the path length, and this is going to work recursively. So this function is going to call itself multiple times to uh, gather the data needed. If uh, our given n is not in uh, our module store, or Cache, you could have called this cache for instance. Um, then we need a value to put in there, and this is going to secure that we put it in the store. This is going to return whatever is in the store for this position. Um, This now we can do this uh, because we're not going to modify n in this function. Um, once again, if it's even, then we want to call this function uh, with an n divided by two. So this is not modifying n as this function knows it, but it does modify uh, the value given to the sequential call to this function again. So recursively, this is going to call itself, ensuring that uh, we get a value here. And whatever comes out of here needs to be uh, increased by 1. This is going to give the path length, right? So this, this return value is the path length. So when we call this function again, we get the value for if... if 2 is inserted in here, we preload with 1, so 2 is even, 2 gets divided by 2 and is put into the collats uh, function again, um, 1 is in our store, so it is it is in our store, it skips this bit, it jumps into here and returns the 1 that we put in here, and then this bit of code stores, um, still knows that we were talking about 2, um, so it gets a 1 back from this function call and it stores 2 for n is 2. I'll print the entire um, the first 10. I'll, I'll print something before the return statement and then do a test run for a given number. Maybe I'll do 13. That, uh, that might be a good uh, starting point. Um, and otherwise we are dealing with an odd number so we need to multiply that by 3 and add 1 and again whatever we currently have in store for that number needs to be increased by 1 to account for this number it's a bit abstract, I'm afraid. Um, here I'll show you what number uh, was put into this function and how many steps it took us to get it. Uh, let's see, we're going to run this particular file and we're not going to run this, but we're going to run simply if we do this for number one. Then we simply see that the result is 1, 1. Um, so when calling number 1, the path length is 1. If we put 2 in here, we should get a 2 back again. Yes. So at first it returns the 1 at, at the bottom of the chain. So this, this uh, calls itself recursively and then uh, it starts returning values. Um, and the, the first or the last value calculated is the first value returned and it uh, closes back up all the way to the first call 
which we can see now. Um, so let's throw in 13 as the example gave, uh, given by uh, our friends of the project Euler site. This one's a bit longer, but that does end at 1. In fact, we should read it bottom to top. So if you take a look at 13, there's 10 terms in 13. We've also um, noticed along the way that 40 is the first step after 13, which has 9 steps in its path length. And it, it gets this 9 by um, not knowing anything when going into this function, um, but not knowing anything but how to manipulate this number. So the manipulated number is put into it again. It's not 1, so we need to carry on. It's put in here again and again and again until it finally does hit 1. And we know that 1 has a path length of 1, or of could have set this to 0 and everything would drop by 1. Um, we're not interested in the actual path length, so uh, 0 based or 1 based is beside the point. We are interested in the number gen that gives us the longest path within a set. And if every number starts at 1, then that has no impact for length comparatively. So here we see that um, to check to see if itself divided by 2 was already in the cache, which it was, then it put itself in the cache with uh, path length 2, and then it had something to return up here, so 4 knew that when it was divided by 2, it now has a path length of 2 and increases it by 1 and is 3, and it rolls all the way back down until we see this 10 appear next to 13. So this seems to work. Um, gonna remove this again and enable this. And now that we know that this returns the number properly, If the length calculated here is longer than the maximum length we've seen up until now, then we set max length to be. And we also need, uh, again, this one. We set this to i, and eventually we will return. Don't want this print input out, uh, print output anymore, and I want to add this little bit to show how long that path was for the, this number up to one million. I'm gonna start main again because this will show the difference in timing. With our first attempt, we were calculating. Oh, hang on. We were calculating uh, every series of numbers again and again. So um, when we're checking for uh, 13, we had forgotten everything we'd seen in code. When checking for 26, for instance, we had forgotten everything we had checked for 13. Um, but now we are storing that in our module variable. So if we now run this for 1 million, it runs within 2 seconds. So we had an uh, attempt number 1 running at half a minute, this runs in 2 seconds, this is 15 times faster. So there it is. Um, this is easily one of the more interesting problems we've seen up until now. Um, this one does capture the imagination. Because it's unsolved, the, there are no formulas that say, uh, well, obviously for 13 you'll have a path length of 10, or um, there's no proof even that this always, always works out. There are no counterexamples of numbers not reaching 1. It's uh, believed to be 
true but also believed to be very hard to prove while the problem statement itself is so deceptively simple. So this is a very fun um, problem to think about and it also is a fun one to work out by not by hand up until a million but at least to see how the numbers interact in this particular problem. So I certainly hope you took the time to do that actually and I hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly have. Um, don't forget to check out my github and I will see you again next time. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.